Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim. So, as we left off last time, we were here in the old, I think it's, well, this is actually Hag's End, but it, uh, we got here via Deepwood Readout, where we slay, slew, slew, that's the right word, is it? Slew, we slew the bandit leader, and then we came here to Hag's End, where we learned to shout, and you shout, rawr! Hear me roar, and we uh, killed a, a hag raven, and got frustrated with numerous mass locked doors, which yielded not much profit at all. Apart from that, everything was hunky dory. So today's session, I think I remember saying and doing my research that we have come pretty much to the end of our free flowing exploration of the Hafingar Hold. And as a result of that, we are now going to head back to Solitude, where we are going to sell some last few bits of our wares. Then we are going to go to the Blue Palace to uh, speak with that fella. What's he called? Can you remember his name off by heart? I can't remember. Wolf. Wolf. I don't know his name. The 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 court thingamy Bobsy. What's he called? It's morning, yeah, I've just woken up, it's 928, I've lost my memory. Uh the the, the court the court the, the not the yow, the other person, the court with the not the the, uh, uh, the guy that helps him out the administrator guy <laughs> Holy cow, what the hell am I rambling about here? Is it a proper quest? Come on, this is gonna bug me unless I flame and get it right. Come on, I can do this. Uh, the, the books, that's the one. The books, the books. It was a strange note. Letter from a fork firebeard. That's a fella. Fork firebeard, yes. We're gonna go see him in the Blue Palace. Because he sent me a letter saying he wanted to see me. About the. Ooh, about some strange goings on in a cave. Wolf Skull Cave, I believe it was called. Yes. Some strange folks were trying to summon what appeared to be uh, the spirit of Patema the Wolf Queen. Yes, that very same Patema the Wolf Queen that we have been reading about upon our travels around Hafingar. Seven books we have read and there is one more to go. And therefore as we finally make our way back to Solitude, perhaps for one of the final times, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, we shall retell once again another part of the book. The final part. Book 8 of the Wolf Queen series. Enjoy. The Wolf Queen. Book 8. By Walgin Jarth. From the pen of Inzolicus, 2nd century sage. 3rd era, 127. Following the battle of Ikidag, the Emperor Uriel Septim III was captured and, before he was able to be brought to his uncle's castle in the Hammerfell Kingdom of Gulain, he met his death at the hands of an angry mob. This uncle, Sephorus, was therefore proclaimed Emperor and rode to the Imperial City. The troops, formerly loyal to Emperor Uriel and his mother, the Wolf Queen Potema, pledged themselves to the new Emperor. In return for their support, the nobility of Skyrim, High Rock, Hammerfell, the Somerset Isle, Valenwood, Black Marsh and Morrowind demanded and received a new level of autonomy and independence from the Empire. The War of the Red Diamond was at an end. Potema continued to fight a losing battle, her area of influence dwindling and dwindling until only her Kingdom of Solitude remained in her power. She summoned Daedra to fight for her had her necromancers resurrect her fallen enemies as undead warriors, and mounted attack after attack on the forces of her brothers, the Empress Sephiroth Septim I and the King Magnus of Lilmoth. Her allies began leaving her as her madness grew, and her only companions were the zombies and skeletons she had amassed over the years. The Kingdom of Solitude had become a land of death, 
Stories of the ancient wolf queen being waited on by rotting skeletal chambermaids and holding war plans with vampiric generals terrified her subjects. Third Era 131 Magnus opened up the small window in his room. For the first time in weeks he heard the sound of a city. Carts squeaking, horses clopping over the cobblestones and somewhere a child laughing. He smiled as he returned to his bedside to wash his face and finish dressing. There was a distinctive knock on the door. Come in, pal, he said. Pelagius bounded into the room. It was obvious that he had been up for hours. Magnus marvelled at his energy and wondered how much longer battles would last if they were run by twelve-year-old boys. Did you see outside yet? Pelagius asked. All the townspeople have come back. There are shops and a mages guild and down by the harbour I saw a hundred shops come in from all over the place. They don't have to be afraid anymore. We've taken care of all the zombies and ghosts that used to be their neighbours and they know it's safe to come back. Is Uncle Sephiroth going to turn into a zombie when he dies? asked Pelagius. I wouldn't put that past him, laughed Magnus. Why do you ask? I heard some people saying that he was old and sick, said Pelagius. He's not that old, said Magnus. He's sixty years old. That's just two years older than I. And how old is Aunt Potema? asked Pelagius. Seventy, said Magnus. And yes, that is old. Any more questions will have to wait. I have to go and meet with the commander now, but we can talk at supper. You can make yourself busy and not get into any trouble? Yes, sir, said Pelagius. He understood that his father had to continue to hold siege on Aunt Potema's castle. After they took it over and locked her up, they would move out of the inn and into the castle. Pelagius was not looking forward to that. The whole town had a funny sweet dead smell, but he could not get even as close as a castle moat without gagging from the stench. They could dump a million flowers on the place and it wouldn't make any difference at all. He walked through the city for hours, buying some food and then some ribbons for his sister and mother back in Lilmoth. He thought about who else he needed to buy gifts for and was stumped. All his cousins, the children of Uncle Sephiroth, Uncle Antiochus and Aunt Potema had died during the war, some of them in battle and some of them during the famines because so many crops had been burned. Aunt Bianchi had died last year. There was only his, he, his mother, his sister, his father and his uncle the emperor left and Aunt Potema, but she didn't really count. When he came upon the Mages Guild early that morning, he had decided not to go in. Those places always spooked him with their strange smoke and crystals and old books. This time it occurred to Pelagius that he might buy a gift for Uncle Sephiroth, a souvenir of Solitude's Mages Guild. An old woman was having trouble with the front door, so Pelagius opened it for her. Thank you, she said. She was easily the oldest thing he had ever seen. Her face looked like an old rotted apple framed with a wild whirl of bright white hair. He instinctively moved away from her gnarled talon when she started to pat him on the head. But there was a gem around her neck that immediately fascinated him. It was a single bright yellow jewel, but it almost looked as if there was something trapped within. When the light hit it from the candles, it brought out the form of a four-legged beast by. pacing. I'm on my way to investigate. It's a soul gem, she said, infused with the spirit of a great demon werewolf. It was enchanted long, long ago with the power to charm people, but I've been thinking about giving it another spell. Perhaps something from the school of alteration, like lock or shield. She paused and looked at the boy carefully with yellowed, roomy eyes. You look familiar to me, boy. What's your name? Pelagius, he said. He normally would have said Prince Pelagius, but he was told not to draw attention to himself while in town. I used to know someone named Pelagius, the old woman said, and slowly smiled. Are you here alone, Pelagius? My father is with the army, storming the castle, but he'll be back when the walls have been breached. Which I dare say won't take too much longer, sighed the old woman. Nothing, no matter how well built, tends to last. Are you buying something in the Mages Guild? I wanted to buy a gift for my uncle, said Pelagius, but I don't know if I have enough gold. The old woman left the boy to look over the wares while she went to the Guild Enchanter. 
He was a young Nord, ambitious and new to the Kingdom of Solitude. It took a little persuasion and a lot of gold to convince him to remove the charm spell from the soul gem and imbue it with a powerful curse, a slow poison that would drain wisdom from its wearer year by year until he or she lost all reason. She also purchased a cheap ring of fire resistance. For your kindness to an old woman, I've brought you these, she said, giving the boy the necklace and the ring. You can give the ring to your uncle and tell him it has been enchanted with a levitation spell, so if he ever needs to leap from high places, it will protect him. The soul gem is for you. Thank you, said the boy, but this is too kind of you. Kindness has nothing to do with it, she answered quite honestly. You see, I was in the Hall of Records at the Imperial Palace once or twice, and I read about you in the foretellings of the Elder Scrolls. You will be Emperor one day, my boy, the Emperor Pelagius Septim III, and with this soul gem to guide you, posterity will always remember you and your deeds. With those words, the old woman disappeared down an alley behind the Mages' Guild. Pelagius looked after her, but he did not think to search behind a heap of stones. If he had, he would have found a tunnel under the city into the very heart of Castle Solitude. And if he had found his way there, he would have found, past the shambling, undead and the mouldering remains of a once grand palace, the bedroom of the Queen. In that bedroom he would find the Wolf Queen of Solitude in repose, listening to the sounds of her castle collapsing, and he would see a toothless grin growing on her face as she breathed her last. From the pen of Insolicus, 2nd century sage, <clears throat> the year 3rd era 137. Potema Septim died after a month-long siege on her castle. While she lived, she had been the Wolf Queen of Solitude, daughter of the Emperor Pelagia Septim II, wife of King Mantiaco, aunt of the Empress Kintyra II, mother of Uriel Emperor III, and sister of the Emperors Antiochus and Sephorus, and at her death, Magnus appointed his son Pelagius as the titular head of Solitude under guidance from the Royal Council. Third Era 140 The Emperor Sephiroth Septim died after falling from his horse. His brother was proclaimed the Emperor Magnus Septim. Third Era 141 Pelagius, King of Solitude, is recorded as occasionally eccentric in the Imperial Annals. He marries Katira, Duchess of Vardenfell. And in the year 145, the Emperor Magnus Septim dies. His son, who will be known as Pelagius the Mad, is coronated. And so ends the series of the Wolf Queen. Okay, so here we are once again within the Blue Palace. Ready to... Uh, See what Fork Firebeard has to say. Have I seen you before? Oh, hello. Just tidying up. Oh, she's just a cleaner. Hmm. Maybe that's why I've never noticed her before. Going about her business, not making a fuss. Hmm. Hello, everybody. Greetings and salutations. I am here as per request from letter. Be quick. I have little patience for mundane concerns. Ooh, the snippy. courier must have found you. Yes, he did. That's why I'm here. At least somebody has a friendly greeting I around have here. I so very many ways to deal with people. Very few of them. The courier have must have found you. Yes. Yes, old friend. I'm afraid it's not good news. When you broke up the binding, Potema escaped. We've encountered some of her minions. Steer says she's still in spirit form, or we'd all be dead already. You've already done us a service in stopping the binding, but I need you to go talk to him, to see if Steer can tell us what to do next. Uh, Steer? Care to enlighten me who this Steer fellow is? He's Solitude's priest of Arche. He's the one who figured out Potema was still around. He'll help as much as he can. 
Okay, and uh, well, why me? I'm the major of the college. Why not me? So that should be the question. Anyway, yes, uh, I'm sure we'll figure something out between us. Two powerful minds, you know, all that I sort of stuff. I wish you well, friend. Be careful. A priest and an archmage. You're trying my patience. Fine, I'll go to your side then, shall I? But when I've dismissed the shade of Petema, you can come and grovel for your forgiveness for being so nasty to your city's saviour. Can you hear it faintly in the background? Uh, the ice cream van, yes. <laughs> Seems every time I do an LP session now, the ice cream van, whether it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon or whether it's half past three or four o'clock in the evening, the damn thing seems to want to show up when I'm doing a recording. I tell you, some people do anything. <coughs> Got a slice of the action. Oops, a daisy. Lots of things to take care of. What do you need? Nothing, nothing. I need the priest of Arche. So, do we go? Who the hell is this guy? Is he the cook of the Bath College? Jarls come and Jarls go. But the good cook stays for a lifetime. And I'm a very, very good cook. He doesn't look like that grumpy fellow in the in the solid in the uh, Bath College. He looks like maybe he's the cook for the Jarl, maybe. I don't know. Nice to meet you anyway. Do we go and speak with this uh priest now, or should we sell some of our wares first? I think we'll sell some of our wares first. There's no rush to speak with the, uh, this priest, is there? At least I hope not. Wouldn't it be a crying shame if Petema's, Petema's minions came crashing through the gates and killed everybody? And if I had just been a little bit quicker, I could have saved them all. <laughs> Curse me for selling my w Ooh, look at this! What's this? A castle, a, 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 a Bard's College outing? They're all off on mast. Maybe to buy some spice wine, perhaps. I don't know. How are your students? A field trip. <coughs> of course, Elwyn, an honorary member of the uh, Bards College. Right. Things to sell. Hello, Seymour. Beren said you got trinkets, odds and ends. That sort of thing. Right, what can we sell her? This is what she's selling us. This is what we're going to sell to her. Miscellaneous items and amethyst. Do I need an amethyst for my concoctions? I don't think so. I need a flawless amethyst, but not just regular plain old amethyst. Flawless garnets are no use. Neither are garnets. Petty soul gems. Rubies. Is it just a flawless kind that I need, or do I need just bog standard regular rubies? I don't think I need bog standard regular rubies. Nope. I need flawless rubies, so I sell them as well. 